We can't play friendlies. We can't spar. We're too busy sweating in river drift. <laughs> Let's see. Good, good opening hands. Seems like Jack Shaney decided to change things up. Or, or swap for a new hand. Probably not too happy with what he had before. Starting with... Harmony is such a good opening play in this stage. Like, she's probably the dynamo of this place because she reaches in really far. She covers a lot of the base. She sets up some pretty good defense. Marina's also really good though. Like, Marina's better in defense, doesn't push nearly as far. But with a little help from Och, Oh, how is that pronounced? Chat, how do you pronounce the name of that character? What do you all do? Oct. I like Oct. I just forget to pronounce it that way sometimes. But with a little help from Oct, we do actually get some good pressure going on. Might be able to break through still even with Big Man overpowering them. Jovan has locked in. Jack is deliberating. I fear that he's gotten a a bad hand if he's taken this long. Or he made a good call for a defense. Which means that it is now Jovan's turn to try to pull out the D. And there's very few ways that this does not work out in Jovan's favor. This cold... Cold-Blooded Bandit is just fitting in too perfectly on Harmony. And I guess that's the other thing too, is just... There's been enough time with Harmony to figure out what the really good combos are to play with. And yeah, Shiver plays so nicely into Harmony there. Jovan's seen a way to pierce or break through even further. He's like, I could do that. But, is it even going to be worth it in this situation? If he did pull it off, it basically would shut down everything Jack has going for him. And I would imagine that would turn it into a surrender. Which we're probably not too far from already. I love how the longer we see these games go... The more players start, are having these shiny, like, they realize what their favorite cards are, and they're shinies, and then they just, I mean, it forces them to feel more like they have to be using these cards. Also, I was talking about how I was worried Jack was out. Nah, he ain't! Perfect way back in with the special scope. The pure scope. Splatter scope. Greg scope. Scope mouthwash. And he is looking to cause some terror. We're going straight for the little Judd. Needs to, wants to capitalize on that space and get some special farming off of it. Jack probably going to try... Just playing in his own base. Couldn't find anywhere to really break through. But did cause some terror. Hopefully caused a little bit of disruption to Yopin, but... At least from the looks of things, not nearly as much as he'd want. Splash mob spot, some kind of play. 
I feel like he he's pretty clean to just do whatever. I don't know what Jack has cooking. If he hasn't surrendered yet, which means he's got something cooking. But I genuinely cannot imagine what he is cooking in the kitchen right now, considering how much of a point deficit he is at, and how much of a lead Yovan has. Like, we are set for Yovan to be able just to tempo jack down. Out come the order duelies. We got two more specials that keeps him just barely in. He might be banking on the idea that Yovan just does not have enough or has too much special. But, nah, he decides that it's best to call it here. He, he, uh, maybe he was going for points. He just wanted to look a little bit better. Oh, no, 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 no. That was a top deck. That was a whiff. He whiffed a top deck. He was... He got jack loaded. He got put into a corner. He needed a specific piece. He needed a specific play. And... He was sitting there way on being like, this will be the card that wins me the game. And unfortunately for him... Didn't get it. Harmony coming in for him this time. Oh, okay. Yeah, Big Man also works for a pretty good opening. And I don't think there's nearly as good of a defense. Griller's passable. Not that passable. Uh, that definitely gives me the vibes that he wants to push for the offense, but Yovan gonna choose to defense here. Despite having a splatter scope of his own that he could use to actually. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Mm, Jack deciding to play it safe himself, maybe not having a way to break through there. Marigold will be able to cover a lot of ground, but it's probably going to be overwritten by whatever Jack drops off. Uh, unless he's going for like a 16. In which case, this is going to be a massive oof. Oh, it's the tie clash. Neither walking away with much off of that, and that is... I mean, Yovan has a very important thing there that he managed to get a special to be able to be on the offensive side. Which means that after this turn, he, there's a real chance that he's going to pop a special and he's going to just try to start harassing Jack's base. Which we've actually got two deep... Decent spots to be able to go for the aggression. Yeah. I don't think that's the call. You do get a... You do guarantee you get your special back from that. You get your refund. But that can be very easily defended. That one's a little bit... That one's better for, like, actual aggression. Trying to think about Cuttlefish. There's no way Jack ain't dropping something up there. Jack's dropping something up there. You're cuddle. You're not gonna be able to play cuttlefish, yo. But this is greedy. That that be a greedy play, my man. See, told ya. But with ten or five turns left, Jack is pretty empty on space, and Yovin still has his turf to work with. Ooh, nice fitting tri strainer, but I have to question how many more plays like this he has, because. Yeah, Cuttlefish is going to go into base building there potentially. He could do something else, but it's not going to have that much impact. Just trying to get five, 10 points off of this is respectful. Ooh. 
three turns left. We finally get Gnarly Eddie to gain 15 points. Get all those special points. Those two more special 15 points. That's a very, very healthy heaping of advantage to push Yovan in these final turns. Jack, 100% deliberating all the different things he could be doing in this situation. There's so many ways for this game to go from here. And what he needs is the perfect play. Something that gets him maybe one or two specials. There's one. Now he is set to go for two 312s. Uh, Jovan only has a single 312. So he... He might have to do something small this turn. Unless he just can get like 50 dozen points. And if he put... I feel like the splatter screen this early is a misplay. Though he might be banking on his next card being worthwhile to play. Oh no, no, this is calculated. He's looking at where to put the tent attack. To get as many points as possible. Making a good special call here. And we're going to drop the slider screen on the next turn. Get, he just gets like that. Four more points in his favor. That he really needs in this situation. Jack going in with something small. The order duelies. Sets him up so, to get a five. Which means he's going to be playing a 13 this turn potentially. Yovin tried to find the perfect spot to play off of his new position. I don't know if Jack can bring things back if he had to play a 6-3, though. Instead of, like, anything else. He missed out on so many potential points. Yeah, that's four points that Yovin is missing out on here. Since there's an eight-point difference. That had to be a perfect type mana storm for us to get a tie. It was not perfect. If only he had two 312s. If only. Ah, oh, he was one special short. Just a little off on counter picks and er, setups and plays and just could not follow through. It is hard to build your base, get your specials, pressure your opponent. It's a hard to do a lot of things. Honestly, in that situation, I even I wouldn't know what he was supposed to do. It probably looks so good. I'm going to interrupt myself here. I'm a fry stan. I believe in fry. She looks so good in that art. I love Fry. She's like the best. Best character at this point in Splatoon Universe. Uh, going back on track, I genuinely, like, I could look back at the VOD. Yeah, there's probably a place that Jack could have done to better set himself, but going off of just, like, even hindsight 2020, I don't know what's going on. What he could have done better. Trying to set up some kind of pressure. It That would be essentially... That looks like it'd be a pretty unstoppable way to break in. Gives him at least two more confident ways. And pretty cleanly guards his turf. With an Ouroboros, a tri strainer and a Shiver. That's actually really impressive. Jack managing to set himself up pretty well to be guarded too. But we are going to be... Oh, that's a cute card! That recycled umbrella is cute also. But yeah, Yovin's going to be able to break through here, through that bottom corner. 
manages to pierce despite the clash. Does he have anything that can make its way through? He does the S blast 92. I feel like Jack's gonna concede. This just feels like too rough of a position to fall into. Well, oh my goodness, I see a very good, like, large octopod space. We do get a sprinkler that might be, that's his only way out. Jack, or Yovin, considering just, like, if he goes for the defense and it works, that literally, that legit would just end the game. Much safer play here. Especially against a Hazo Nose, which would have been such a good pierce. But, yeah, with uh, 12 points in the lead, and Jack pretty much out of space... Actually, it's, I mean, Yobin's essentially out of space, too. Oh, no, never mind. He had a perfect Recycle Brellus, but that was not I at all in this entire thing. So, never mind. Jack getting shut down. Very unfortunate. Very fresh. I can imagine that was a very frustrating uh, set for him. Yeah, it looks like the brush early in was a pretty monumental misplay that he was not thinking about too hard. And. It hit him really hard.